Good afternoon, and welcome to my November 4th COVID-19 briefing. This is my 25th time that I've been with you to share the latest news and updates on COVID-19. Since March, we've been adjusting how we live our lives with the safety of our community and our families in mind. We should prepare ourselves and expect to continue along this path for another six months. As we go into winter and, and throughout the flu season, we must remain committed to protecting ourselves, our families, and this community as we all wait for a vaccine. I continue to keep in close contact with the county's other mayors. Mount Vernon, Cedar Woolley, and Anacortes will be working on coordinate coordinated approach to reopening our in-person City Hall services when it's safe to do so. For the time being, City Hall will remain closed and City services will, be, will continue to be offered uninterrupted online, over the phone, or through curbside services. Our county continues to be in the moderate risk category, but if numbers continue to trend upward, we may become a high risk county. The county health department reports that most new cases are happening due to extended family gatherings and people that are traveling out of our area for social reasons. We have the information about current cases and we know the best way to combat the rise in cases is fewer and shorter interactions outside our households. The state's new Safer Gatherings webpage is designed to help people make safe choices during the fall and the winter. They include ways to have safer gatherings, a guide for having conversation with friends and families about gatherings during COVID-19. The Safer Gatherings pages includes a safety checklist and information about holiday celebrations during COVID-19. When planning to host a holiday celebration, you must assess current COVID-19 levels in your community to determine whether to postpone, cancel, or limit the number of attendees. Celebrating virtually or with members of your own household poses low risk for spread. For spread. In-person gatherings pose varying levels of risk. Higher levels of COVID-19 cases and community spread in the gathering locations as well as where attendees are coming from and increase, increases the risk of infection and spread amongst the attendees. The state and the CDC ask that you consider the following environmental factors when planning your holiday gathering. Indoor gatherings generally pose more risk than outdoor. Indoor gatherings with poor ventilation pose more risk than good ventilation, such as those with open windows and doors. Gatherings that last longer pose more risk than shorter gatherings. Gatherings with more people pose more risk than gatherings with fewer people. Gatherings with attendees who are traveling from different places pose a higher risk than gathering with attendees that live in the same area. Higher levels of COVID-19 cases and community spread in gathering location or where attendees are coming from increase the risk of infection and the spread among attendees. Today, I attended the health department's briefing and they explained that they think some of our increased numbers are because people are traveling from Snohomish County to Skagit County and Snohomish County has had higher numbers. Gatherings with attendees who are not adhering to social distancing, that means staying at least six feet apart, mask wearing, hand washing, pose more risk than gatherings with attendees who are engaging in preventative behaviors. And finally, in general, gathering with more preventative measures in place, such as mask wearing, social distancing, hand washing, pose less risk than gathering where fewer or no preventative measures are followed. We are all balancing our desire to see our family and our friends 
what necessary steps we must take to keep our loved ones and our families safe. Taking every precaution and following these extra steps shows that we care about the health of our safety and safety of our families, friends, and our community. Currently, we're at 56.5 cases per 100,000 residents, with 1.8% of the people testing positive. The percentage of hospital beds occupied in the county is currently at 73.5%, and the percentage of beds occupied by COVID-19 cases is at 0.5%. We are currently meeting three of the five metrics set by the state. Island Hospital reports having tested a total of 7,486 people with a total of 79 positive cases, 10 hospitalized cases, and fortunately, with no deaths here in Anacortes. The Skagit County has a total of 1,304 cases, 106 people have been hospitalized, and now we're at 25 deaths. Last week, our county had 61 new COVID cases, and this week alone, 35 cases were reported over the weekend, 25 cases were reported on Monday, and eight new cases were reported yesterday. We're seeing cases rise. In October, we had 134 new cases, and that was up from 85 in September. I went over the CDC's guidance on a fewer and shorter and safer interactions, but I want to stress how important this is to be taken so seriously. Social events and traveling to visit family and friends are the top ways that people are contracting COVID-19. This is accounted for 40% of all transmissions in our county in the month of October. As of yesterday, there's been 30,688 tests performed with 723 people testing positive since our testing site opened. The testing site has been operational since April and has been an important part of our fight against this virus. The testing site continues to go strong and I encourage you to get tested if you believe you've been exposed to COVID-19. And the testing site at the college also provides free flu vaccinations for anyone that does not have insurance. The Anacortes Public Library has been very busy. We're continuing to serve Anacortes during these times and they're offering comfort and resources for you and your family to safely enjoy the library while we stay safe and stay distant. Tonight at 7 p.m., the library will host a live Washington Humanities program on turning up the volume on everyday communications with a timely interactive program drawing from philosophy and psychology with an actor and public speaking expert, Monica Ferraro. This interactive discussion will produce practical exercises for honing your online persona and as something for all of us as we navigate the world, both online and in person. We all need a little imagination and fun in our lives, and the library has become our home for community events. Even though Genre Night is postponed till next year, you can still show off your homemade costumes in 2020 until November 15th by submitting a photo to the library's costume contest to win literary prizes in all age categories. Please check out the children's page for information on home activities to do with your family, like using the take and make kits for learning and fun, tune into videos online to, and see library staff demonstrating activities, sharing updates, and of course, reading stories. Our very own city council member, Carolyn Moulton, will read for Tuesday's Tales next week. The library will be closed for the ob observance of Veterans Day next Wednesday. This last week, the library served its 5,000th 
customer at curbside since the, we, we began delivering books to cars this summer. That equates to 17,000 books that have been checked out by our community during COVID. The Park and Recreation Department continues to provide important projects for the community. Construction crews will begin to mobilize the Depot Plaza restroom project and the Grandview Cemetery expansion next week. The Parks Department has also been tracking the Thompson Trail use and reports that visitation is up over 25% over this summer compared to the summer of 2019. Our community is taking advantage of our beautiful outdoor spaces. The recreation programs are having a positive impact and the second session of Active, Camp Active is now open and filling up. The park staff will run this camp for our kindergarten through fifth grade students on Tuesday and Thursdays from 3.30 to 5.30 from November 10th through December 10th. This gives our youth an opportunity to be active and outdoors at a time when we're all spending so much time inside. The Parks Department also has other enrichment activities planned, as well as including reading for K through third graders with our library staff members and volunteers daily. And our practice only basketball league will begin November 16th. Teams will practice in the City Hall gym Monday through Friday at 6.30 and 7.30 p.m. We have protocols in place to screen participants, check temperatures, in compliance with state guidance. Local fiscal impact. While City Hall continues to be closed to the public, the Finance Department is managing the city's incoming and outgoing mail. All utility bills, issues and payments, and assisting customers with questions by phone and email. Please visit the city's finance webpage for electronic options on utility payments and sign up for paperless billing to receive a monthly $2 credit on your utility bill. As we near year end, you need to start thinking about your dog license for 2021. And there is a link on the city's finance webpage to direct you on how to do it online and to make the process as safe and easy as possible. We are currently in the process of evaluating the proposed city budget for fiscal year 2021. A public hearing was opened on November 2nd at the council meeting, which will continue to run through the November 16th council meeting. So please log into a council meeting to voice any thoughts you have on the city budget. So those comments can be considered by the city council in this final budget. The draft budget proposed includes a 1% property tax increase. The resolution to adopt the tax increase as well as an ordinance to adopt the city's budget is currently scheduled for November 23rd council meeting. More information on the city budget can be found on the city's finance webpage. The Planning, Community, and Economic Development Department is working this week in partnership with some of our local business owners to hang lighted wreaths on the light poles in our downtown area. This vibrant and welcome community is finding ways to make our downtown safe and inviting as we move into the holiday season. We want to thank our fire department and our local businesses who are working to make this happen. The department has also notified 18 businesses who were selected to receive funding through the Small Business Stabilization Grant provided by the Skagit Community Foundation. This funding is going out this week and will continue to support businesses as they weather this economic uncertainty of COVID-19 and the various restrictions that have been put in place. Our permitting numbers remain strong and our remote and virtual process has proven itself to be efficient. As of right now, we have 49 new single family residential permits issued this year compared 
to the same date last year of 43. And we have 148 single family residential alterations compared to 137 at this time last year. The Anacortes Museum is scheduling visits of the Carnegie Gallery and the Maritime Heritage Center for individuals or small groups. Available visit hours are Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Sundays from 1 to 4 at the Carnegie Gallery only. If you would like to reserve a visitation slot at one of our museums during our Phase 2 limited reopening, please call 360-293-1915. Two nine three nineteen fifteen during our open hours to arrange for your visit. Safe reopening protocols are in line with state guidance and they've been implemented to assure safe, physical distant visits. The WT Preston will continue be, to be closed for the season. Island Hospital has been a pivotal community partner as we navigate COVID-19 in Anacortes. I am thankful to be working with Charles Hall, the CEO of Island Hospital, throughout this pandemic. Island Hospital has created a drive-through site in which you can get your flu shot. They've also compiled a list of local places to get your flu shot. Flu shots are critical to the health of our families and our neighbors. Getting vaccinated for the flu is just one very important way to keep yourself and those around you safe and healthy. And you can see in the photo, Charles Hall and I each got flu shots together. We decided we'd be united in that effort. Island Hospital is thinking outside the box and making sure that in addition to our physical health, our community has the resources that we need to address mental health concerns in addition to adding a new provider, Dr. Shad Ali, who is a child psychiatrist, joining Island Hospital from Boston's Children's Hospital, they've also hired two licensed social workers for psychiatry and behavioral health that will be embedded in the Anacortes School District. Assuring the physical and mental health of our students, especially at this time of transition, as we start to bring them back into the classroom. This support is so important. Our elementary students have started this transition and our middle and high school students will be coming back for in-person learning over the next few months. We must remain committed to staying safe as our community youth comes back to the classroom. So we're entering our ninth month of this pandemic. Today, as we face a probable fall and winter COVID-19 surge, I implore each member of our community to continue to embrace a safe COVID lifestyle. Plan your upcoming holiday gatherings to be small, short, safe, and meaningful. We need to stay connected but not at the risk of our health. This can be a difficult time for our neighbors and our friends. So while we must remain physically distanced, we still need to be there to support each other through these trying times. We must continue to support our mental and physical health, especially if we feel overwhelmed. It has been estimated that 30% of the population may suffer some type of mental depression by year's end because of the COVID's impact and isolation from each other. Please reach out to each other. And more importantly, ask for help or support if you're struggling. Talk to a friend, a neighbor, your physician, your church, or call Island Hospital or an emergency dial 911. We're strong and we're resilient and we will come through this. And I'm committed to maintaining a welcoming and safe community for everyone. I will continue to cooperate with all community partners to ensure that all city services and programs are accessible to all community members and access to additional resources 
to care for everyone's basic needs. I'm committed to our city's partnership with our business community to ensure their long-term success. It's been a long road and the journey is still ongoing, but we are on a cordis. We will prevail. Please support each other. Call the city if you need help or information. Take care, and I will see you all very soon. Good afternoon.